question of the day. I'm looking to apply to play guitar on cruise ships. Have you got any advice for the auditions? Yes, and who's that from? Uh, that is from DK Barker Musician. DK Barker, yes. Okay, so there, there is a couple of things with cruise ships. I can tell you about this. So firstly, anyone who's thinking about cruise ships, let me tell you a couple of things. Cruise ships can be absolutely phenomenal. You get to travel the world and go and see different parts of the world and, and have an amazing experience on a huge crazy yacht or a huge, huge crazy cruise ship and enjoy the sun and play music and get paid for it. Absolutely brilliant. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely fantastic. However, once you're in that world, it is difficult to then come back and start getting work because when you go away, all of your contacts on land, they basically have to go and find replacements. So all the bands that you're in, they go and get replacements. So they go and start getting the bass player from this and the guitarist from that, meanwhile, while you go away. So don't take it lightly because it absolutely can be an incredible life-changing experience. But once you're there, you're committing to it because once you've gone for a month, if you go, don't like it, coming back again and all your work on land has dried up, that's a bit of a no-no. But I know lots of people who do cruise ships and they absolutely love it and they've been doing it for years. Um, so definitely worthwhile experience to do. Now, how do you get it? There are a lot of people who actually put bands together specifically for cruises and there are even some agencies specifically for cruises. But a lot of the agencies, they actually go after fully fledged bands. So they don't say, look, we're looking for a guitarist for this band unless there's a band on a cruise ship and something's happened. So for example, on a lot of cruise ships, the band are not allowed to drink alcohol at all. And if you do drink, you get thrown off the cruise. If that happens, they've got to find someone in uh, to, or to come in to, to take the place in the band. Now, if, if the people on the boat can't find a guitarist to then jump in, it will go to the agency because they have to make that, that contract work. Um, but most of the time, there are kind of MDs or band leaders. I know about three or four of these guys who put these bands together specifically to take it to the agent and say, we want to go and do cruise ships. So if you're looking to do it as just a guitarist, rather than approaching the agent, which you can do, your best bet is to go and try and find some of these people. If you want to drop me a line, I can probably hook you up with a couple of people that can give you a bit more specific advice. Because again, it's another part of the industry where everyone knows everyone because there's a lot of people that will do this kind of touring bit where someone will say, I don't do this anymore, and they'll go and grab someone from this tour, and everyone knows everyone. So if you want to drop me a, a DM, then I will uh, hook you up with a couple of people who might be able to help. Uh, but other than that, same thing. Google, go and find cruise ship uh, agencies and actually approach them and say, can you hook me up with a couple of bands that are doing this so that I can give my CV? When it comes to the actual auditions themselves, the usual thing, you need to learn everything. If you're going into the world of covers and functions bands, something I know very well because in the next room, we literally have a management company that puts out 30 bands that have 1,500 gigs. I've got a business up near Manchester in Crewe, which does five, 6,000 gigs or five or 6,000 contracts every single year. And so with this, it's something I know very, very well. If you're going into this, this is not what it used to be. This is not weekend warriors anymore. This isn't turning up, doing a bit of playing, but it's not my real thing. There are people who now do this for a living and take this very seriously and they invest a lot in their gear, they invest a lot in their marketing. So if you want to do that, you've got to compete. You need to know the types of stuff that you're going to be playing. So there's 30, 40, 50 standards that most bands will play. There's probably another 30 or 40 songs that kind of pop up every so often. You need to know those 60, 70, 80 songs like the back of your hand so that when you're turning up, they will just say, These, this is the set list, off we go. Because before I actually did this, in fact, when I was a student, when I was 19 to when I was 18, 19 to when I was 20, 21, my job was to dep as a bass player. So I would literally turn up to a gig where the bass player was ill and they'd literally go, what do you know? And I'd be like, oh, well, you tell me your set and I'll just say yes or no. You can't just go, no, I don't know this, don't know this, don't know this. You are literally learning stuff backstage, but most of the stuff you are just expected to know and you are expected to be able to transpose. So they literally might be, you might walk in, they might go cosmic girl, but we're gonna change the key to D. 
And you go, fine, I can do that. And so the whole set is this concentration gig where you're trying to remember songs that you might have played six months ago in a whole new different key whilst you're trying to do BVs and, and look around for different changes that might happen. So the way to do that is you absolutely find out all these key songs by going on agents like Warble Entertainment and going checking out all the bands and seeing the songs that keep cropping up and writing them all down and learning all of them and then changing the key and learning them all again and then changing the key and learning them all again. So that way you can say to people, even if you need someone five minutes before you go on, I'll be there, I'll turn up and I'll have my stuff and I'm ready to go because that is how you get your foot in the door.